Welcome to the Learning 2019 podcast, where we help you get the most from your conference experience with conference insights and presenter interviews. In this episode, we were able to nail down Steve Rosenblum, the event manager and curator for Learning 2019. Steve has been involved with the Learning Conference for more than 20 years and has spent the last seven years as the event manager. There is simply no better person to talk about the conference, experiences, keynotes, and attendee tools. Steve's commitment to creating the most valuable and unique L&D conference is a huge part of what keeps attendees coming back year after year. In this episode, Steve tells us what he's most excited about for this year's installment. We're sure you'll find it useful. Steve, big changes at the conference. Well, maybe not big changes. You can tell us whether or not they're big changes. Uh, An acquisition occurred, Closer Still Media purchased the Learning Conference. What has changed? And is there anything that people who've been to this conference before can expect? Hey, that's a great question. So Closer Still purchased the conference originally in partnership with Elliot last year. And then this year are taking full responsibility for producing and organizing the conference. And Elliot has stayed on very engaged as an advisor and a keynote speaker and is my personal advisor in terms of ideas and things to do for organizing the conference. Some of the speakers that we've had, Elliot has had a key role in helping us to come up with some really great content for this year. My role has changed a fair amount this year. Through Closer Still, I've been able to really play a bigger role in curation of the content, keynote speakers, and all of the other aspects of the event. So this year, I've had a really much bigger overall role as the event manager and curator. How have you found that, the, the, the role of curator and, and trying to, to live up to that expectation of what this conference has been for so many years? I looked at it from a couple perspectives. First of all, I see myself as, in many ways, the protector of the brand and what has made this conference so terrific for so many years. And and having worked on the conference for so many years, I've really had a great feel for the things that make it special and unique. And while we wanted to keep as much of that excitement and energy and, and cool, diverse programming having Elliot lead only one of the general sessions meant we needed to come up with some other ways to pull that in. And part of it is we've brought in a really cool group of people to be the chairs of the other general sessions so that they have the same kind of energy and excitement in a different way because everyone has their own personality. So we've brought in some different kinds of things. We've brought in Second City to do some comedy on Sunday night, as well as the chairs, Don Taylor, Nigel Payne, Richard Culotta, Bob Mosier, and Elliot, of course, all each doing their own general session with a range of keynote speakers in those sessions, panels in those sessions, and a lot of diverse programming where short segments of really interesting and deep dive content, as well as some really great keynote speakers like Sanjay Gupta and Lindsay Pollock, Michelle Wise, all of these people that will bring a really exciting and and unique flavor to the event, but still in many ways, the kind of stuff that people have come to expect at this conference. That'll be interesting to see the the slightly different voice that will be on stage. Now, those individuals that you mentioned, uh, certainly with Bob and Don and Nigel, Richard, they've been at this event before, they know how it works, but they all have really different styles, like Bob's styles compared to Nigel's, compared to Don's really different. So I, I think the, the the feel when we come into those general sessions is going to be a little bit different each time, which maybe raises the excitement a little bit. It, it will be neat to see how how each of those individuals embrace that role and, and execute on it. Absolutely. And one other thing we have this year th- is to create a through line of content. We've been able to get Second City to play a role throughout the event. So in addition to doing their opening session with comedy and improv and some very, very fun shtick and even a song about the event, a woman named Rachel Miller from Second City is our MC. And for most of the general sessions, Rachel will be the first person that you see. So she'll introduce the session. She'll introduce the chair of the keynote And she'll be there to kind of get people excited during each of those sessions as they come back in. So uh, she'll be a person that people see throughout the event. So we have have a professional entertainer 
getting things started each for each of the general sessions. Yeah. And what's great about Rachel is that she's actually from the field. So she's, she's right. been a business person. She's been in the learning space. So she's got a corporate background as well as a learning background, as well as she actually used to be a Disney cast member. And now she's at Second City. So she's got a perfect blend to work with this audience. That's exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. I'll pay attention to that as we uh, look at some of the podcasts that will run. Actually, as we get into the event, I'll pay attention to that and and probably offer some comment on it. You've already talked about uh, the brand a little bit, and you've mentioned some of the things that make this conference unique, but I really love the way that you said that, the protector of the brand. Uh, can you describe the brand in your words? What makes this conference a little bit different? What's its value proposition? If an individual only could go to one conference a year, why would they pick this one? One of the things that we've always done at the Learning Conference is we've always focused on the future of learning. We focus on trends. We focus on where things are going. We've always attracted a very senior audience because we're looking at things from a predictive perspective. So we're not just looking at how do you do something now? How do you do best practices for this or that, which is all incredibly important. But when people come to the event, I think they get a good sense of what's around the corner of what are the things that will influence the field in years to come. And particularly, you know, with Elliot, um, he's a great futurist. He sees what's coming. And some of the things we've done over the years, I mean, I can remember the first time we did things like blogging and wikis and even Twitter. We were doing that stuff at this conference years before people knew what they Mm. were. And so we've always been on the edge looking toward the future. And so I think that's one of the things that makes it really unique in that perspective. And, and, you know, this year, as well as any other year, we've really got people looking toward what are the trends? What is the future of work? That's some of our keynotes. What are the new generations bringing to the workforce? Another of our keynotes. And certainly looking at things like workflow and technology innovation and all of that stuff really bring people to this event to really get charged and excited about what's coming. Yeah. And and I think that as an attendee, this is an accurate statement. There's always something unique, something new. One of the things that I've noticed in attending is that there seems to be a deeper amount of takeaways and application back in the workforce. Certainly the first couple of years I was involved with the escape rooms and have some really good examples, actually visited companies that took that put it into play, uh, certainly with gamification and some of the intensives that Carl Kopp has done in, in, in the past. What do those unique types of events, like those longer intensives or the hallway experiences, some of the just some of the events that are just plain fun, like the evening at Epcot, how does that contribute to the overall brand? So I, I think there's a couple different things in that. So one is what we have always called the experiences. So, you know, obviously we have a lot of content. We have 150 breakout sessions and six keynote sessions and all of that. But we've always had real focus on the experiences outside of a session and things like the escape room or even this year, your own designing your own comic and the book club that we're doing this year and things like that are always meant to give people alternatives to going to a session, to try something different, to get some hands-on experience at something that will, first of all, create a different experience for the uh, attendees, but also give them something different to think about and consider when they go back to their own companies. Say, oh, you know, I tried this out at the learning conference and it works. It's possible we could do this. Let's try it out at our company and see how it goes. Is this something we could replicate? Is it something that we could do ourselves? So trying to create those sorts of experiences that give people an opportunity to go back and do stuff has always been something really important to us. Let's talk a bit about some of the tools that are available for attendees, because you just mentioned 150 concurrent sessions, intensives, hallway experiences, book clubs, panels, general sessions. I mean, there's a lot happening. There's always something to, to be involved in. It's not just sitting in a, in a small room with another 40 people listening to a presenter. There's lots of different ways to engage. I'd like to specifically bring up the Learn Guide and something I noticed about the Learn Guide that I think is really fantastic. Uh, it's how you've actually broken down and color-coded 
the different types of sessions. And you've made it really easy for someone to identify the type of event that they would like to go to. Uh, some people really like panels, other people really don't like panels, and you don't want to show up at a panel if it wasn't made very clear. And then even more than that, the fact that the way that you've called out the supplier showcases. Uh, I don't know how many conferences I've been to, and it seems like there's, it's almost like a little a, a Venus flytrap. You end up inside these conference sessions and they close the doors and, and lock you in. And then they just talk about their stuff. And you didn't know it was going to be a sales pitch. In your case, it's very clear what they are, who you're going to be listening to, what they're going to be talking about, so that you can make a conscious decision if you're going to join into one of those sessions. Maybe if you could talk a bit about that and then a bit about the learn guide in general. So, you know, it's interesting. We've, we've always focused on and kept these concept of a format. And I've had a lot of questions about it from some of the folks who are new to the event, working on the event, not understanding, you know, why the format is an important thing to call out because, you know, isn't it just about the content? Isn't it just about the themes or hot topics that people will go for? And, and our feeling has always been, you're right, that people think of things differently. People experience things differently. And some people experience a panel differently than an action or a hands-on kind of a session. Or some people really only want to go to sessions where they're going to be hearing case studies and knowing what other companies have done because they really want to get experience from the, or, or learn from the experiences of other companies. So calling out those formats has always been something that's very important to us in terms of giving people choice. Because again, a lot of what it is is about giving people choice and also giving them enough information to make those choices, not just based on the content, but also based on the format and who's presenting, what company they're from, and things like that. The supplier showcase sessions are an interesting thing, you know, because we don't have a trade show or exhibit hall. Sponsorship is a very different thing at this event. And so we recognize the importance of the learning field, the the suppliers in the field and what they bring to the event from a content perspective is huge. And so we want to feature these sessions. We want them to be something that people will consider going to, but we also want to make it clear that they're sponsored, that there is a vendor who's going to be telling them about what they're doing. One thing I'll point out about the supplier showcases though, is that there's been a shift in them over the years. So when I talk to suppliers about doing a showcase, I talk about three different types of supplier showcases. So one is just a kind of a direct sales pitch. You know, uh, here's our product. This is what we do. This is why you should love it. And that's great. And for some suppliers, that works really well because it's something particularly, you know, if it's a large learning management system that a lot of people use, they want to hear the roadmap, they want to know what's going on, or they're thinking about getting one. And so that's a, a terrific opportunity for them. The next type is a case study. And so talking about something that the supplier has done successfully with a partner and they bring the partner and they talk about this. And so again, it's a little more promotional, not as promotional as a direct sales pitch, but it's still promotional because it's really showing the success of a product or a service with another company. But what we're seeing now is that more and more of these suppliers are really doing thought leader sessions. So if you look at the description it's very clear in some cases that this is just a thought leader from this company doing a session on something that is a trend, that's interesting, that's different. And so I would encourage people to look at those as viable sessions and say, well, you know, I may not be interested in this product or I may not be looking for a product, but the thought leader aspect of what the people are talking about may be really interesting. And I would say if you look at the descriptions, there's quite a number of supplier showcases that fall into that category this year. In terms of the Learn Guide, so the Learn Guide is our online application this year, our mobile app, and it's from a company called Zarista. We've used them several times in the past quite successfully, and I love it. It has a great user interface. It's very easy to use, and it has a lot of rich information in it. It's a great way for people to build their own schedule, to look at what's out there and decide. And we don't require anyone to pre-register for sessions. So when you go in and you pick something in there, it's not telling us anything about what you want to do. It's really for you to build your own agenda and decide what it is that you want to go to. So you have an idea or a few ideas of the things you want to focus on. It also has all of the attendee profiles. So if there are people that you want to connect with, everybody in there has tags associated with them. You can pick and when you do your profile, you can pick the things you're interested in learning about. 
and mm -hmm. you can see other people who've picked the same thing. And our sessions have tags as well. So there are recommendations when you go and look at the uh, agenda part or the schedule part of the system, you'll see recommended sessions. And those are there if you say put curation as one of your personal interest tags. And we have sessions that have curation as a tag. They'll show up as recommended for you. So you yeah. can get some ideas of things you might want to go to. Yeah, that's, that's a really great piece of information because there's one of the things I noticed in the, in the PDF version of the guide was that there isn't tracks. Like we, we would often see that the learning and development conferences in the actual guide, you've opted for the describing the, the type of session, the format of the session, but that app really gives you the power to say, these are the categories I'm interested in, or these are the tags I'm interested in, and then producing the recommendations from there. So if you want to right. filter or search on any of those, you can find things, even if it's not one that you've selected as an interest in your profile, you can always look for any of the tags. For, for anyone looking for that, no, you can find it online. It's at learning2019.zarista.com. Zarista is spelled Z-E-R-I-S-T-A. Or you can find the app in the Apple App Store or Google Play. The specific Zarista app you're looking for is your event hyphen powered by Zarista. Again, that's Z E R. I-S-T-A, and you probably noticed I did both the American and the Canadian version of Z. Correct. Canadians and the Americans cover Zs and Zs. Uh, exactly. Okay, awesome. So we've, we've, we've talked about the guide. Uh, what about the bot? Uh, actually, just going to mention the bot. So thrilled that you asked about the bot. So LearnBot is just the coolest, most fun thing. We started this last year in a partnership with Mobile Coach who is a company that creates bots for learning. And we branded it with them as LearnBot. It is a cyber assistant. It can help you make choices. It can answer questions. Similar to the way you can search for content based on a keyword or theme, you can ask LearnBot. So if you say to LearnBot, I want to learn about curation, it will come back and give you a list of recommended sessions that you can then choose to add to your schedule. And it's fully integrated with Learn Guide so that it's bi-directional looking for information from the schedule in Learn Guide and then giving you suggestions that if you click on them, will take you back into Learn Guide to add them to your calendar. It also has a FAQ database. So if you have questions about what time is lunch and how do I pay my tuition or any of those sorts of things, LearnBot can answer those questions. And of course, it's constantly learning. So if there's a question you ask that is stumping it, we'll find the answer and teach it to LearnBot. So the next time that question comes up, it's able to answer it. And it has a cute little friendly user interface as well. So it's, it's a great tool. We've really made some enhancements to it this year over what we had last year with it. And hopefully it will continue to grow and, and be part of our experience. We even added it to our website this year. So if you go to learning2019.com, LearnBot is actually there on the website so that prospective attendees can ask questions about how much is tuition or what time does the conference start or things like that. Yeah, I think to one of your earlier points, Steve, this is a good example of... Now, chatbots in general have been sort of the last couple of years sort of making it circuits and L and D conferences. Certainly, learning was was at the front of that, and bots become better with time. And so, you guys were in it early on, and the bot keeps getting better and better. Fantastic app that the Learn Bot looks really cool. I'm going to spend more time than I should playing around with it, trying to stump it and 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 see what it can come up with. Okay, so. Let's talk a little bit about specific content. Obviously, we don't have time to cover everything, but let's talk about some of the highlights. Steve, you mentioned earlier you, your enhanced role as a curator for this particular event. What are the two or three big things, whether that's speakers, experiences, or sessions that you're really excited about in 2019? Uh, first of all, from a keynote perspective, I am very, very excited to have Sanjay Gupta at the event this year. Bob Mosier will be talking to him a little bit, and he'll be talking about wellness at work and the importance of the brain in terms of learning and neuroscience. And I mean, it's just, it's going to be a really fascinating conversation and presentation. I'm also very excited about Lindsay Pollack, who's got a new book out on multiple generations in the workplace. I think that fits really, really well with our themes this year of how business changes are impacting learning changes. And then having Michelle Wise from the Strata Institute, they've just released a study on the future of work. 
and where people are going, the skills that are going to be important in the future. So I think all of that content is going to be really huge and relevant and exciting. And certainly, you know, having Carl Kapp come and talk about, he's got a brand new book out on micro learning, uh, and he'll be able to talk about that in one of his breakout sessions, as well as he'll spend some time on the keynote stage talking about that and about gamification. I'm really excited about the first learning book club that we've ever done. We were trying to think of some really different and interesting experiences. And one of the things that came up was there are a lot of readers out there. A lot of our people, a lot of the folks who are in the learning field really do a lot of reading of industry books. They know who's out there. They know the kinds of things that are being published. And so I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to get folks together to talk about some of these books? And it was a challenge figuring out what books we would tackle. So we actually had a little competition there and had people choose from, we got six book recommendations, and then we had people choose two of those books. So we're going to talk about um, Millennials, Goldfish, and Other Training Misconceptions, which is... Um, Clark Quinn. Clark Quinn. And then we're going to talk about How We Learn, which is um, When, Where, and Why It Happens by Benedict Carey. And so we're going to have one of those books each day at lunch. So on um, the first day, we'll talk about Millennials, Goldfish, and Other Training Misconceptions on Monday at lunchtime. And then on Tuesday, we'll talk about the How We Learn book. And it's just an opportunity for people to casually get together and give impressions of the books and make recommendations of other books, too, to folks uh, who are interested in, in knowing of some other stuff. We partnered with the ATD Bookstore, who will be on site. So they're going to have those books on hand if people decide that they'd like to go and hear about them but didn't actually read them yet as well as all the other books that we had in our list of choices for folks. Mandy Christensen from Chewy, who's a former 30 Under 30 and who's been involved with the Escape Room and a number of other things that we've done over the years, offered to facilitate the book club. Okay, so she'll be there to kind of kick it off and get the conversation started. And we're not trying to make it a formal presentation. It's really meant to be a conversation similar to any book club that folks have been a part of where people sit around at the dinner table or, you know, over cocktails and, and talk about the book they've read over the last month. We want it to have that same feel, informal, fun, and candid. And the authors will not be there. So... Uh, we didn't want to intimidate anyone by picking a book that you one did. of our authors is here for. I've read both of those books. They're both fantastic. They're excellent choices. Of course, they would be. Comment on Millennials, Goldfish, and other training misconceptions. I've probably given away 10 to 15 copies of that book. I read it and jaw on the floor. It is absolutely fantastic. I have no affiliation whatsoever with Clark, uh, but it is an outstanding book. So many things that uh, just because of the way that we've always done things, there's things that we do that are wrong in our profession or that we, or we don't do correctly. And it really hinders learning. And that book it is so well written. It is simple language, individual little sections, like four pages at a time. You can read them almost as, as individual articles. It is so good. If you're, if you're a reader and you like, uh, you want to read more about learning and development, pick up that book, go attend that session. Clark is, is brilliant. And he's sarcastic a little bit too. So I, I like that style in him. Well, you should stop by on lunchtime on Monday and join the group and um, hear what other folks have to say. That would be really interesting, actually. If I can, if I can find time away from, from the, the comics booth, I will absolutely try and slip into that one. I love that book. All right. So we've talked a lot about, about the conference. We've talked about the things that you can use, the app and the learn guide, the bot to, to help make that conference experience just a little bit easier and a little bit more smooth running. What other resources are available? Who can they talk to? What should they look for if they want to get the most out of this conference while they're in Orlando? So first of all, I think spend some time looking at the guide, spend some time in the online app, looking at the program before you come, think about some of the things that you really want to focus on. There are so many choices at each time slot. So, you know, picking the thing that you want to go to can be challenging, but I can tell people one thing that's really important. And I, I really do encourage this. If you get into a session and it's not what you want, leave, go to a different session it's okay. You know, one's going to be offended because 
it's important that you get what you want out of the conference. And if you're in a session and you say, oh, you know what? I thought this was really going to be something different. That doesn't mean it's not the right session for someone else, but it might not be the right session for you. So I would really encourage you to, to think about that. It's okay. And it's okay to skip a session. It's okay to say, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to spend some extra time uh, doing the pit crew challenge, or I'm going to go and do the MIT experiment and be part of that. Or I'm going to go to the wellness room. We didn't even talk about the wellness room. So, you know, we have this great space that's going to be available for wellness and mindful meditation and stuff guided by a couple of our folks. We'll have yoga in the morning there as well. You can really take time to appreciate and enjoy those things and get from the conference those experiences. So I would say, you know, be open to different experiences while you're there. Try stuff out. Don't feel like you have to be at a session at all nine time slots because there are other opportunities there for you. I would definitely encourage people to go to Epcot and enjoy your evening. It's a great networking opportunity to get to know people. Just try things out. Draw a comic strip. That's a great idea. You know how much I love comics. All right, Steve. uh, One last quick question before we wrap things up. Uh, This is is just sort of a silly little thing that I've noticed in the past because I like to watch people. When, When we come into registration and we go and we get our badge and then they've got the table with all the buttons and you can put the buttons on your lanyard or on your bag or your shirt or what have you. Is there an appropriate number of buttons to take or is it a free for all every year I watch people and they go and they'll have two in their hands and they're trying to decide, do I want this one or do I want this one or that? Take them both. Is what's running through my head? What, what is the appropriate button etiquette? I think you should take as many buttons as you feel speak to you. Pick the things that, that speak to you and, and they're great conversation starters, you know, use them as not only what you pick, because you want to have people notice that about you, but notice what other people are wearing too, so that you can start the conversations with them. They're not just for adornment, although they're fun to wear. Yeah, it it creates a a small bit of community. I remember the the first year that we did the escape room, there was the escape room button and uh, the the three of us that were running that, every time we saw someone, whether we, we knew who they were or not with the escape room, did you come to the escape room? Have you tried the escape room? What do you think? Why did you choose that one? Uh, yeah, they're, they're a great little conversation piece to get that conversation going. Uh, I should also put in a plug for the Genius Bar. We do have the Genius Bar again this year. So um, Caleb Clayton from Fidelity is our genius at the Genius Bar. He'll be there coordinating it along with Allison Anderson, who's a longtime uh, learning participant. And we'll have other guests throughout the time. Um, You weren't here last year, so you didn't see last year's Genius Bar. I'm I'm sitting here um, wrapped, wondering what this is. So uh, out at breakfast and lunch times and things, we're going to have this bar that's called the Genius Bar. And it's a place where you can go and ask questions. It can be, you know, how do I implement uh, an Addy program at, at my company? Or how do I start something to do with whatever? And One of the geniuses there, one of the people who are there to help out can give you some ideas if that's their area of expertise or they can point you to someone else. Um, It's just a place to have conversations and ask questions of folks that have been in the field for a long time and have really cool ideas. And it's, it's just a very helpful way to, to get some insight or guidance from some of our very smart leading people that we'll have who will spend some time at the Genius Bar throughout the week. That's a, that's a really neat idea because that is one of the challenges we have when we attend conferences is we have specific questions or we want to talk a bit about our situation and ideally with others who have experienced these types of things. So it, it, it's really facilitating that. That's, I'll look forward to that as well. And then you can wear a Genius Bar button to show that you've been there. Uh, Thanks so much for this, Steve. Really appreciate it. Uh, Learning 2019 just around the corner. I'm sure that all of the final preparations are are keeping you up late at night. I guess we'll see you in three days. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks so much, Steve. That was Steve Rosenblum on the Learning 2019 podcast. You probably won't see Steve on stage at the conference. He's a behind the scenes kind of guy and he doesn't seek any fanfare. But if you see him in the conference hall, shake his hand and say thanks and then let him keep moving because this guy is busy. For more episodes of this podcast, search any of the Learning 2019 social media channels for the hashtag L19podcasts 
or subscribe to the eLearning Alchemist podcast on your favorite podcast app. We hope you'll tune in again for more great content from Learning 2019.